higher, 2.138 grams heavy, something like that. So now you know why. Now you know why that was maybe off a little bit, the, the material in the library. In fact, let me just go back and look here and then look at the mass of this part. 71.3. So it's like 2.3 grams heavy if you use the default on-shape material. You got to make sure that you take a look at those drawings, just like in the real world, um, when you're, you know, when you're working with a material in the real world that comes from a vendor, you got to find out from them what is the correct material density or the expected material density. So, ow! Hey, what's up, everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's on shape tutorial for beginners. We're gonna take a look at the Too Tall Toby website at the app called Practice Models. This website is twotalltoby.com slash practice. And in this app, we've got a repository of quite a few 2D to 3D challenges. So if you're ever interested in practicing going from 2D to 3D, this is the app for you, twotalltoby.com slash practice. And the model that we're gonna look at today is this very first challenge here. It's called Tier 1 Part. Uh, it's actually a tier one level of complexity and the skills tested in this model are going to be symmetry. There are 1,445 people who have successfully completed this challenge and I am actually one of those people. I completed this challenge the other day and I came up with a total time here of 10 minutes and 41 seconds. Now that was using SolidWorks and I recorded myself and posted that tutorial right here and we had a few people in the comments asking for the same tutorial in Onshape. So today that's what I'm going to make for you. Now after you finish one of these challenges, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can see how you fared against the field. So you can see here that the average time for the field was four minutes and 26 seconds. Hopefully today, I'm gonna to be able to do this model just a little bit quicker than that. I don't think I'm gonna be as fast as Victor, but he is a former world champion of 3D CAD speed modeling. So I'm okay with that. As long as I'm as fast as the field or maybe a little faster than the field, I'll be happy. So I did grab a screen capture of this print the other day when I made that tutorial. So let me bring the screen capture here up on the screen. Let's turn on the keyboard cam and let's start the clock for this challenge. So anytime you're trying to go from a 2D print to a 3D model, you're gonna ask yourself a series of questions as part of your game plan. And the first question you're gonna ask is, where should the origin be located in my 3D model? See, we're looking at this 3D view of the part, but this maybe could be a physical part or maybe just an idea you have in your head. You wanna ask yourself where the origin should be located. And for me, if you can imagine this back edge of the part here, the origin is gonna be right at the center of that back edge. Now, how do we come to that conclusion? Well, the first thing that we do is we look at the model and we look to see whether or not the model has symmetry in any direction. And in the case of this model, it has symmetry here kind of running across in this direction. So that tells me the origin is going to be located somewhere along that central plane. Then when we look down here at the front view of this model, we can see here that most of the dimensions or quite a few of the dimensions seem to be coming from the same spot. And that spot is down here in this lower corner. So I think the origin is going to be located right here, right at the center of the model. And it's going to be located down here in this lower left corner. And deciding on the origin location is very important when you're going from 2D to 3D. The other thing that's very important when you're going from 2D to 3D is deciding on what your very first sketch is going to look like and on what sketch plane that sketch will be located. And so that's what we sometimes call starting plane, starting profile. And in the case of this model, I think that my starting plane is gonna be this central plane here running right down through the middle. So we'll call that the front plane of the model. And my starting profile is gonna look something like this. I've got all the dimensions I need to create that kind of starting shape shape just like that. And then I can just extrude that out to whatever this distance is, which in this case looks to be 29 millimeters. Then all I'm going to need to do is add a fillet here at 14.5. So I'll add it on this sharp edge and on this sharp edge. That'll give me this nice round shape here. And then I'll be good to go to answer this question. What is the mass of this part? Now, the final thing that I want to mention here at the start is that for on shape users where you might get tripped up is in the material density. See, different CAD programs have have different libraries of materials. And sometimes even though the material is called ABS, it might have a slightly different density in Onshape or in Fusion 360 or in Alibre than it does in SolidWorks. And so 
Making sure that you've got the correct material density will be key to coming up with the correct answer to these challenges. And I've made a video about how to create your own custom materials, uh, materials library and on shape. I'll include a link to that video up there in the upper right near the clock. But in today's video, I'll show you how you can manually input a material density and then use that manual input to calculate the correct mass. So let's get into it here. I'm gonna move this over to my second screen. I'm gonna go into my free seat of Onshape, onshape.com slash free. And then I'm gonna choose create document create document. That's going to be my first step. And I'm going to call this document 24-01-01-tier1 part. And I'm going to choose to create this as a, as a uh, public document because I'm working in the free version of Onshape. And then I'm going to go up here to the upper left and I'm going to look at this little hamburger menu and go into my workspace units. And I just want to make sure that I'm using the correct units. So my length here is millimeters. That is correct. And my weight here, my mass is being measured in gram. That is correct as well. So just a kind of a pro tip there, you wanna make sure that you're using the correct workspace units. So now we can move ahead with our plan and our plan is to begin on the front plane with a new sketch. So I'm gonna pick the front plane here and then I'm gonna press S on my keyboard. And once I press S, I can choose to begin a new sketch. Now this is the S key menu in Onshape and mine has been customized to include a few additional icons that you might not have. If you ever wanted to include those icons, you could right mouse button and then you could choose customize customize and that way you'll have those same icons that you see there on my menu but for today i'll just be mainly using the default icon so i'm going to press the s i'm going to i'm going to let me just hit escape here uh, i'm going to press the space bar you see currently i've got one thing selected let's see if i choose the right plane now look i've got two things selected well if i choose the space bar that's how you clear all your selections in on shape so i'm going to go to the front plane i'm going to press the s key i'm going to begin a new sketch and then i'm going to press n on my keyboard and n is the shortcut for normal two. So I'm going to get my view to be normal two there, and then I'm going to press the S key again, and I'm going to choose line. Now you might have this icon here, extrude. I added that. I think it's really helpful to add that right mouse button, customize, and then you could add extrude from the features menu. But the line command should be there. Even if you don't have the extrude command, the line command should be there for you. So you click the line command here in on shape, and then you're going to single click on this point here, which is the origin. You're going to move your mouse straight up. You're going to single click again, and then you're gonna let go of your mouse. So you just let go with your with your uh, mouse hand. You're gonna come over to your 10 key and you're gonna type in that distance, 62, enter. Then you're gonna move your mouse over here to the right. You're gonna single click in the background. You're gonna let go of your mouse and you're gonna type in 30, enter. Then you can move your mouse straight down here. And for this dimension, we're not really sure what this is gonna be. So we're just gonna single click here in the background. We're gonna move over this way. We're gonna single click. We're gonna move our mouse straight down and then we're gonna let go of our mouse again. And I'm sorry, we're gonna move our mouse straight down and we're gonna click. And then we're gonna let go of our mouse again and we're gonna type in 15, enter. And then we're gonna move our mouse over this way horizontally. We're gonna left click and we're gonna let go of our mouse and we're gonna type in 65, enter. And now that we've got all those dimensions in place, what we could do is we can hit a, hit escape. That gets us out of the line command. And then we can click on this point. So you see how the mouse is saying there's one thing selected. And then we can click on this point. So now you can see the mouse is saying we've got two things selected. And then we can press I. And I is the shortcut for coincident. So I, and there we go. Now we have a nice fully black sketch here, fully defined or fully constrained sketch. If you didn't get there, maybe pause the video, start a new document, and then you could uh, come back in and you could give it a try again. But we were able to get there. And so now I'm gonna choose to exit this sketch. So I'm gonna press the green checkbox here to exit the sketch. And then I'm gonna click inside of this sketch here. So you see how the whole sketch became highlighted. The whole thing is solid. And then I'm gonna choose extrude. And when I do that, you can see the on shape is now taking that shape and it's allowing me to extrude that shape into a solid. And so the depth of that extrusion, I can type in that depth over here. It's going to be 29 and I'm going to press enter one time. But remember, I wanted the origin to be right at the middle of this part because the part has symmetry. So you'll see here that in the extrusion, I can choose symmetric. And what that'll do is it'll take 14.5 millimeters and put that on one side of the plane and 14.5 millimeters and put it on the other side of the plane. So you see when I choose symmetric here, symmetric, what it does is it takes this 29, it chops it in half and it puts half on each side of that extrusion. 
So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to hit the green check mark, and there we go. There is our first feature. And now for our second feature, what we're going to do is we're going to choose the fillet command. So you see here we've got the fillet command. And for the fillet command, I'm going to come down here to my radius, and I'm going to type in 14.5, enter. And then I'm going to take my mouse out on the screen. Now, again, if you if you have things selected, like if I pick this face, pick this face, oh, I got all this stuff selected up here in this box, right? You can just press the space bar. So there's currently three things. I press the space bar. Now there's zero things. Now there's nothing. So I'm going to put that 14.5 fillet onto this edge here, so the corner of those two faces, and this edge here, the corner of these two faces. So we put that fillet on those two edges. We hit the green check mark. We give the model what's called the final spin. And this thing is looking pretty darn good. Now, if you wanted this model to match the color of the part on the drawing, you could come over here, this lower section of the uh, of the on-shape tree, this lower section down here, you've got your parts list. I'm going to right mouse button on that part one, and I'm going to choose edit appearance. And then I could go through and choose an appearance that kind of matches my drawing, maybe one of these here. That one looks pretty good. And then I'll hit the green check mark. You don't need to do that. You know, if you're trying to speed run, that's probably going to be a little bit of a waste of time, but you can do that. And then you can also come over here. You can right mouse button on that part one and you can choose assign material. And when we choose assign material here, this is where we would go into our on shape material library and maybe look for a, a material like ABS in here. Or we could go into our custom Toby material library and we could choose ABS from here. Again, I'm going to put a video up there or down in the description or both uh, that will explain to you how to create your own custom material or how to reference the existing custom material that's already up there for you. But the other thing that you could always do is click here where it says custom. So if you click here where it says custom, we could name this uh, custom ABS. And then for the density over here, it's uh, grams per millimeter cubed. So this is going to work out to be, I believe, 0 0.00102, if I'm doing the math correct there, uh, grams per millimeter cubed. So let's see if that's correct. So we're going to hit the green check mark here. And then let's go down here to the corner in on shape. We'll come down here and we'll click in this corner and we will click the mass properties command. And then we can click here. And the mass that we're coming up with is 69.2 grams. The question is asking, what is the mass of this part in XX grams? And the correct answer is 69 grams. So took us a little bit closer to 10 minutes. We actually kind of matched our time from the pre previous video. Um, we weren't able to quite get down to that four minutes and 26 seconds, but maybe if I keep practicing, maybe if I keep trying, I can get down to that number. But hopefully that answers your questions in Onshape about uh, why the mass is not coming up correctly, or if you're using a different CAD system, why is the mass not coming up correctly? It's because the different CAD systems have different libraries. And ultimately when you work in the field, you have to create your own custom material library. The materials that are provided for you usually are not to the spec of the material provider and so you know you have to do a little tweaking anyway so you may as well learn how to create your own custom material library and uh, hopefully from watching this video and watching the video i linked to you now know how to do it in on shape so let me know down in the comments what you thought about that video let me know if you have any questions about anything that we covered in that video let me know if this answered your question about the answer not coming up correctly i think it was like 1.138 uh, grams too heavy or something like that. Um, and so now you know why, or 2.138 grams heavy, something like that. So now you know why, now you know why that was maybe off a little bit, the, the material in the library. In fact, let me just go back and look here. So if I go back to this part, right mouse button, and I say edit material, and I go to the on shape library, on shape library, and I search for ABS, Let's put this guy in here, hit the green check mark, and then look at the mass of this part, 71.3. So it's like 2.3 grams heavy if you use the default on shape material. You got to make sure that you take a look at those drawings, just like in the real world, um, when you're, you know, when you're working with a material in the real world that comes from a vendor, you got to find out from them what is the correct material density or the expected material density. So... Hopefully that answers all the questions that you have. Again, let me know down in the comments what you thought about this video. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Check out twotaltobi.com slash practice and we'll see everyone in the next tutorial.